a visitor to Bowen University and president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, Reverend Dr. Israel Adelani Akanji, the Chancellor, Reverend Dr. Amos Achi Kunat, the Pro Chancellor, Deacon Uluwale Abegunde, Vice Chancellor, Professor Joshua Olalekan Ogunwale, members of the Governing Council, members of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, principal officers of the university, members of Senate and Congregation of the University, KBC, my Lord's temporal and spiritual, other invited special dignitaries, parents and guardians of graduating students, staff and students of Bowen University, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by congratulating the Senate Council and Board of Trustees of this university on the 16th Convocation Ceremony. I congratulate in particular the graduating students who are wearing happy faces on this their day of joy. You have gone through the crucible of quality training at Bowen University. And during this ceremony, you will be admitted to your various degrees. It is my prayer that this will be just a small step in your giant leap to greater heights. I congratulate your parents families and friends who have come to rejoice with you today. In this convocation lecture, I will reflect with you on the topic strengthening private universities for greater contributions to national development. When I was approached for a title and requested to speak on contemporary events in the country, I was convinced that today, in the convocation ceremony of a university, which was established as a derivative of the private university's policy, enacted while God gave me the opportunity of being President of Nigeria in 1999, nothing can be more contemporary than to examine the contributions of private universities to national development from 1999 to date. The question to be addressed is, have private universities met the reasons why we approved their setup in 1999? How can they be strengthened to deliver better on their mandate to address contemporary and future developmental challenges of Nigeria? These are weighty and important questions which time available at this event will not permit full justice. In the time available, I will provide important highlights to the answers. 
before moving fully to the lecture, I wish to note the impressive report on the standing of Bowen University, which my office received on Friday, October 29, 2021, from the National Universities Commission. The report confirmed that Bowen University is in very good standing among the 99 private universities we have in Nigeria today. It earned full accreditation in all but one of the academic programs in the colleges, faculties of administration, agriculture, arts, basic medical sciences, engineering, law, medicine, science and social sciences. It is only in public health that I am sure the interim accreditation will change status to full accreditation when we accredited in 2022. Please continue on this winning trajectory of quality and let Bowen University be known as one of the leading private universities in Nigeria. Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in 1999, we were committed to granting operating licenses to private universities for a host of reasons. Three of these stand out. One was to address the issue of access. Access to university education was getting increasingly constricted and private universities were expected to expand admission spaces. Secondly, based on the impressive performance of the private sector in primary and secondary education in Nigeria for upwards of 140 years, that is, from 1859, we were convinced that the private sector would be a good partner with government in delivering quality university education. Thirdly, the anticipated stability of the academic calendar of private universities was seen as one of the antidotes to exodus of students seeking university education in countries where the academic calendar is more predictable. Looking back 22 years, have these expectations been met? My reflection will be backed by trend data from NUC's State of University Education in Nigeria 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Let us take the reasons one after the other, beginning with the reason of expanding access. Available data confirm that we are steadily achieving this goal. In the 2021 session, the 99 private universities had a total enrollment of 117,694. No doubt, this number, which represents about 5%, of total enrollment in the Nigerian university system is far from what we envisioned. Perhaps we can take some solace 
that this is a global phenomenon as we have relatively lower enrollment in private universities compared with public universities in all countries of the world. It is worth noting that all the top 50 universities in the latest 2022 Times Higher Education Global Ranking of Universities that are privately owned have enrolled averaging 15,000. Harvard University, a private university established as far back as 1636 and which has consistently featured as number one over the years, has an undergraduate enrollment in 2021 of 10,063 and a postgraduate enrollment of 21,592. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, another private university, established in 1861, has 2021 to 2022 undergraduate enrollment of 4,638 and a postgraduate enrollment of 7,296, totaling 11,934. For the Nigerian situation, High parental poverty level is a major factor that is driving down enrollment in private universities. I am convinced that by and by, enrollment in private universities will keep improving, albeit at a rate that is not too different from the global average. For me, that private universities have provided a window of increase in access to university education in Nigeria is reassuring and a testament and a testament that one of the reasons for their establishment in 1999 is being met. Let me take the second reason for approving the establishment of private universities 22 years ago. This is the expectation that they will contribute alongside, if not better, than public universities to the delivery of quality university education in the areas of teaching, research, and community service. Trend analysis in the 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 State of University Education in Nigeria by Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, the Executive Secretary of the National University Commission confirm exemplary performance of many private universities in the quality of teaching and community service. NUC data confirm that of the three clusters of ownership of universities, federal, state, and private, the overall academic program performance of private universities expressed as a percentage of programs with full accredit accreditation has been consistently better than that of the state universities cluster and next to that of the federal. Beyond the NUC reports, let us see the assessment of some global bodies of the quality of private universities in Nigeria. In 
the 2022 Times Higher Education Global Ranking of World Universities, a private university in Nigeria was third among the 201 universities in the country. Another private university was recently noted by the World Bank as a leader in Africa in the production of vaccine for Ebola and other virus-related debilitating diseases. Furthermore, employment data on graduates from Nigerian universities show a high density of products from private universities being preferred by international organizations. Perhaps we should return to the NUC data to glean more specific insights into the performance of private universities in teaching, research, and community service over the last 22 years. In teaching, the reports over the last three years convey a steady upward trend in good quality teaching. Even during the COVID-19 lockdown, while most public universities were on pause in teaching, the private universities engage their students throughout the period via online delivery of lectures. The winning formula in quality teaching for private universities is a combination of three factors. Low teacher-student ratio, better resourcing of classrooms and laboratories, and well-disciplined teachers who apply modern methods of curriculum delivery. Let me quote from the 2020 NUC report about Bowen University. And I quote, Bowen University has introduced many techniques to achieve learner-centered and learner-driven teaching and an inquiry-based classroom environment in order to encourage collaboration and to develop critical thinking skills. These include the use of technology-enhanced teaching, video lecture delivery, panel discussions which allow for engagement of selected panel members by students as moderators, small group discussions which enable students to lead discussions while teachers simply facilitate. There's also industry collaboration which make it possible for professors of practice from the industries to teach some university courses in their areas of specialization. There's also the use of simulated interview, which is mainly conducted by seasoned human resource professionals from the industry. Bowen University has designed an interactive digital teaching application which is aimed at meeting the learning need of today's students who are basically digital natives because they were born in a completely digital time and must learn digitally. With this application, the university has been able to diversify and create a standard for lecture content 
in a bid to bridge the gap between traditional approaches and demands imposed on teachers by today's learner. End of quotation. I applaud the efforts of Bowen University and can only urge that you keep improving on your performance in teaching. Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me now take research. Private universities in Nigeria are noted for research activities with national relevance and global impact. The list of such activities over the last 22 years is long and impressive. A comprehensive list is obtainable from NUC reports. We may wish to note that breakthroughs have been recorded by researchers from private universities in several disciplines, including science, medicine, social sciences, and the arts. For instance, in spite of the restrictions brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, many Nigerian universities, including privately owned, engaged, in research to develop non-pharmaceutical intervention, MPI, equipment such as face shields, personal protective equipment, PPE, and ventilators. In 2020, a private university in Abuja developed a robot for scanning the lungs of COVID-19 patients. Private universities are no pushover in scholarly publications as their staff continue to give vent to their research outputs in national and international journals. Data for 2020 alone show that scholars in private universities authored 50, about 67% published works in national journals, and 42, that's 57, in international journals. Other research-based activities in 2020 include patenting, Local product development, 23, 31%. And the attraction of research grants, 21, that is 28%. Time will not permit elaboration on community service activities of private universities, but the expansive list of such impressive activities has been documented by the NUC. On stability of academic calendar being the third reason for establishment of private universities, it is clear that this goal has been met. Chancellor, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, so far I have provided some insights into how well private universities in Nigeria have been striving to justify the reasons for their establishment. My conclusion is that private universities have done fairly well for their age, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. Talking about age, 22 years is in, in the life of a university is at the toddler phase 
when compared with ages of private universities in other regions of the world, some of which are over 1,500 years old. The expression, the young shall grow, is apt. And indeed, the young is growing. But the young private university system in Nigeria should take steps to grow at a respectable and faster pace in response to national development and contribute more to solving global grand challenges. Our private university in Nigeria can be strengthened to deliver on this expectation is a major component of this lecture. I will now propose some recommendation in this regard. First, human capacity development. A major challenge of private universities in Nigeria is numerical def deficit in human capacity, especially of the academic staff category. The cost of employing full professors in the face of the smaller number of students is daunting. Human resource sharing with neighboring universities is one of the solutions. In applying this solution, care must be taken to adhere to NUC standards. Another solution is strengthening human capacity is to provide training opportunities for staff to acquire PhDs and for attending conferences to share and update their knowledge and skills as well as public, uh, publicize the name of the university. The authorities of private universities must invest more than before in building. Indeed, strengthening the human capacity for teaching and administration. Two, research capacity strengthening. A major pillar of university operations is research. The feasibility of the contributions of Nigerian universities to national development is largely seen through research. Research will uncover the causes and cure of challenges inhibiting Nigeria's development. The unveiling and the solution to the challenges of insecurity, poverty, out-of-school children, those relating to the economy, and others will be addressed through research. The universities are called to duty more than ever, ever before to play a significant role in the research enterprise. And here, private universities should stand up to be counted. To be able to stand firmly to be counted, the capacity of scholars in private universities should be strengthened. They should be up to date in modern methods of research. To make this happen, authorities or private universities should periodically organize in-service training in research for their staff and encourage research partnerships with scholars in other universities in Nigeria and in other countries of the world. Rewards in form of prize should be given to outstanding researchers. The Committee of Vice-Chancellors 
of private universities of, in Nigeria should consider instituting such an award at a central level based on disciplines. Third, strengthening facilities and infrastructure. The authorities of private universities should take steps to continue to provide modern facilities for teaching, learning, and research beyond those that were presented for obtaining the operational license. A university should be a university in its physical outlook rather than be seen as a glorified secondary school. In a technology-driven world, our universities, public and private, must have the minimum ICT tools to deliver quality education, including provision of uninterrupted internet service. Again, a solution is partnership and collaboration among universities and between a university and the private sector. I am told that this partnership model is working in some private universities already. Such experience should be shared and scaled up. Fourth, strengthening curriculum implementation. I am informed that by December this year, after 14 years of the previous edition, the Nigerian university system will have, will have re-engineered core curriculum and minimum academic standards in all 17 disciplines in the system that will lead to the production of nationally relevant and globally competitive graduates with 21st century skills. Private universities should show leadership in the process of preparing their staff for the effective delivery of the CCMAS. This can be achieved through centrally organized workshops and the monitoring of the implementation of the curriculum. This way, private universities will gain an important advantage over public universities. Fifth, strengthening the mapping of critical areas of national development. Universities owe it a duty to be at the vanguard of national development through the generation of ideas and provision of data that will influence national policy formulation and implementation. Private universities, as a collective, should set up a committee that will be an observatory for identifying and mapping critical areas of national development and provide a lead for public universities. An area that needs urgent attention is value reorientation. Our universities should be the vanguard of the efforts for promoting inculcation and sustenance of values, including fear of God, integrity, honesty, and love of country. Sixth, strengthening creativity in funds generation and management. I have reserved this recommendation to the end since funding deficit is often listed by 
the management of all Nigerian universities, public and private, as the number one challenge. The refrain everywhere is inadequate funding. The concept of adequate funding is plastic, elusive, and stiff to attain. Yet, efforts, efforts must be made to provide sufficient funds to deliver quality university education. Such funds should come from a multiplicity of sources and not from a mono source, such as proprietor grant. The managers of our private universities should be taken through regimes of training on how to creatively mobilize funds for running their university. When such funds are mobilized, attention should be paid to prudential management of the scarce financial resources. Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I bring this lecture to a close, after highlighting the progress made by the Nigeria's private universities, I've come to the conclusion that we did not make an error in opening the space in 1999 for the private sector to partner government in providing university education. I have also concluded that our private universities have done fairly well so far, given their young age, and we need to be strengthened to meet the high expectation of the citizenry in the years ahead. I offer six suggestions on how private universities can be strengthened to enable them to contribute better to national development. It now remains for me to wish you a very successful graduation ceremony and a happy future to all those who will be graduating today. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all well.